In this lecture, we're going to examine the principle of relativity as discussed by Newton and Galileo. So let's begin by defining what a reference frame is. A reference frame is basically a region or space, usually a three-dimensional space, in which we're conducting an experiment, in which we're making observations and we're measuring physical quantities such as velocity and acceleration. So, generally speaking, there are two types of reference frames. We have inertial reference frames and non-inertial reference frames. So, let's begin by defining what an inertial reference frame is. An inertial reference frame is a reference frame in which Newton's first law of motion basically holds. That is, inside an inertial reference frame, an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain at motion unless acted upon by a net force. So an inertial reference frame is basically either uh, static, it's either at rest, or it's moving with a constant velocity. On the other hand, a non-inertial reference frame is a reference frame that is accelerating. It is either accelerating in a linear fashion or it's rotating about some fixed axis. So, let's look at the following four cases and let's actually determine which one of these are inertial reference frames and which one of these are non-inertial reference frames. So, let's begin with case number one. So a train moving with a constant velocity. Let's suppose we're inside a train and we want to conduct an experiment inside that moving train. And the train is moving with a constant velocity. So by the definition of an inertial reference frame, because our reference frame is moving with a constant velocity, that means this must be an inertial reference frame. Now, let's move on to the second case. Now, let's suppose we're standing on top of a rotating merry-go-around, a rotating disc. Now, by definition, because the disc is experiencing centripetal acceleration, that means this reference frame is in fact a non-inertial reference frame. So, let's label this as a non-inertial reference frame. So, this basically means if we take an object, for example, a ball, and place that ball stationary onto our rotating disc, once we let go of that ball, that ball will begin to move outward even though no force is actually acting on that ball. And that's exactly what we mean by non-inertial reference frame. Newton's first law of motion does not actually hold for this particular case. Now let's move on to case number three. A turning car moving with a constant, velo constant speed. So now we're sitting inside a car and we're making a turn, our speed, the magnitude of velocity is constant, but the direction of velocity is changing because we're turning. And that means the car is experiencing centripetal acceleration, it's rotating, and so we're dealing with a non-inertial reference frame. So this is a non inertial reference frame. Now let's move on to example four. So example four is the earth. So we know the Earth, as it moves about an orbit, it's basically rotating about an axis. And by definition, the Earth is a non-inertial reference frame. However, usually because the mass of the Earth is so large, we usually make the assumption that the Earth is not rotating. And so sometimes we treat the Earth as being an inertial reference frame, but by definition, definition because it is in fact rotating, the Earth is a non-inertial reference frame. So, now that we define what a reference frame is, let's discuss the relativity principle.
principle as discussed by Newton and Galileo. Now, the principle of relativity states that the basic laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. And these laws, for example, are the first law of motion, the second law of motion, and the third law of motion as discussed by Newton. Now, that basically means as you go from one inertial reference frame to a second different inertial reference frame, things like forces, mass, acceleration, length, and time all remain constant. And these quantities are known as absolute quantities. So a quantity such as mass is absolute because the mass of an object does not change when the object goes from one inertial reference frame to a second inertial reference frame. And that leads directly to the following important statement. Now, because the laws of mechanics do not actually change for different reference frames, for different inertial reference frame, no one inertial reference frame is special in any particular sense. And that implies that all inertial reference frames are basically equivalent. Now, what this basically means is the following. If I conduct an experiment inside a moving train and then conduct that same experiment inside a moving plane, those two experiments will essentially be the same. So the mass of the objects, the length of the objects, the acceleration of the objects will all be exactly the same in those experiments conducting in the different inertial reference frames. So that's exactly what we mean by the following statement.